Good morning. Do you have trouble sleeping? Do you have trouble falling asleep at night? Do you have less than eight hours sleep? Today I thought we would have a nice chat about ways, ideas, habits you can follow to help you fall asleep. As you know, when I do these shows, I like to have a cup of tea here. So why don't you grab yourself a drink of choice and let's have a nice chat about how to fall asleep. I have my journal here and I'm going to go through my ideas on how to fall asleep. At times in my life, I've struggled to fall asleep at different stages, different times when I'm working through various things in my life. And I know my daughters also struggle to fall asleep. And it's my um, difficulty or my challenge at times to fall asleep, which has led me to the internet and watching ASMR videos and to meditate so consistently. I meditate at times for up to two hours a day, sometimes longer, and sometimes a lot less than that. There are times where I might only meditate for 10 minutes, but I'm generally fairly big on meditation. One of the reasons I'm really big on meditation is that I have four children, and four children is like having random explosions in your life where you're kind of like a train running on a track and suddenly there's an explosion and the train is derailed. And that's kind of my life. I have these strategies and these plans and these ideas and these operations and I write down goals and then explode. One of the children will be unwell or they suddenly need to do homework project or they suddenly need to be somewhere and life does not go to plan. Do you have a life like that where you make plans, set goals, and then suddenly the whole thing is upended by something that occurs in your life, which really is beyond control? Does that happen to you? Well, it certainly happens to me. It certainly happens to me. So without further ado, let's go through my top ideas to help you, my friend, to sleep. The first one and the most important one, taking some notes here, is during the day work towards being still. Now I can almost hear you laughing as I say that. Work towards being still. Ha 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 ha. How do you do that? Well I must say my friend, I laugh too. Be still during the day. That is hilarious. The funny thing about our minds is that the more our minds think, the more our minds want to think. It's like a mouse on one of those, you know, those circular treadmills. The more the mouse runs, the more the treadmill turns. So there's lots of research to show that the more we think, the more our minds want to think. The more we ruminate, the more our minds want to ruminate. The more we worry, the more our minds want to worry. So our minds almost gather momentum by itself and it keeps on running until we literally fall over. I have a life like that. My life is literally on fourth gear, on turbocharged all the time. There were always dramas with children. There are always things to do and the list is never completed. So there's lots of reasons for me to worry. There's lots of reasons for me to, to want to move faster. And my natural personality is to do so. My natural personality is to go faster, faster, faster. I've learned over time that just doesn't work. Now, my friend, that doesn't mean I get it right because that's not true. I don't get it right. But every single day I work towards finding and realizing stillness in that day. The way I find stillness might be when I pick up the kids, I sit in the car for two or three minutes as they're coming out 
and I do a breathing meditation where I just focus, observe my breath and I focus and observe my body is one way I find stillness. As I'm washing the dishes, I notice myself washing the dishes and I feel the plate and I notice the running water. It might be for one minute, <laughs> as if I do the dishes in one minute. It might be in five minutes or for five minutes. Another thing I do to find stillness is that I, in the line at the shops, I will breathe and I'll notice myself taking a step in the line. So I use mundane, normal things that I do to find stillness. And throughout the day, I notice how my body feels. Sometimes when I'm running late for basketball or I've got to take the girls to singing or pick them up from performance, I find myself getting more and more stressed and anxious. So I will stop and take the time to notice this. Now when I say stop, I might stop for 30 seconds, 45 seconds, and I'll notice that my brow is getting furrowed or my temples are becoming stressed or sometimes the muscles in the back of my neck hold stress. So I'll simply notice that. I might hold my hands up and notice whether they're holding stress or whether I can actually make them limp and floppy. So first step is the ability to be still during the day in easy, straightforward ways. I'm not talking about a two-hour self-inquiry meditation. I'm talking about achieving what you can achieve in that day. So finding stillness in ordinary tasks that you conduct, that you do every day, daily tasks. So one, find stillness every day. You're not going to fall asleep at night if you haven't found some stillness during the day. I'm going to say that again. So imagine me standing up, fanfare, drum roll, you are not going to fall asleep at night if you haven't found time to feel stillness, to be still during the day. Number two, say goodbye to the day. You need some ritual, some symbolic, meaningful ritual to say goodbye to the day. I'm really big on rituals. You know I'm big on rituals. I think it's really important that you follow. We all follow habits. We all follow routines. Some of our habits are good for us. Some of our habits are not so good. So we can attach meaning to those habits through symbolism, through use of symbolism, through attaching the habit to a particular time, through noticing the habit, through noticing what values that habit demonstrates. We can attach or give that habit meaning, voila, it becomes a ritual. I believe that we can be happy through use of rituals, which I talk about in my book, which is coming out soon, having a little bit of trouble with the last organisational de details, which is the way life goes, isn't it? So, number two. Number one is be still during the day or find ways that you can be still in your life. Now, you may have children, you may have a child in the terrible twos, you may have four children, you may have no children, you may have six dogs or 44 cats. But find ways to be still, find a way to say goodbye to the day. So the way we say goodbye to the day, and I'm saying this briefly, I could go through this in a lot more detail, is in the last two hours leading to sleep, you slow your train down. So imagine that you are a train, you can't just come into the train station and put the brakes on. You need a couple of kilometers to slow your train down as it comes into the town. How do you slow your train down? You may dim the lights. I am big on Himalayan salt lamps, big on turning lights down. I say to the kids, start to slow down your movement. Turn off screens, speak more slowly. Move more slowly. No more food. Now, it sounds great in theory, doesn't it? Oh yes, let's slow down. Easy peasy. No, my friend. I have plenty of mummy meltdowns, believe me. 
But every day I get up in the morning and I sit at my diary and my journal and I start again. Each moment is life. We live from moment to moment. Our only experience is right now. So when you get up in the morning, you have another chance to live life. So get up in the morning and plan your day. At the end of the day, each day, say goodbye to the day. Now I actually get the kids to write out a bedtime ritual. And as you write out that bedtime ritual, think about the symbols you use. Fluffy slippers, brushing your teeth, dimming the lights, decluttering your room. Now here's another area where I have to laugh to myself. Sometimes life gets so full on with me because I'm creating videos, creating podcasts, writing constantly, and I have four children a lot, a lot towards most of the time. So decluttering my room is sometimes something I laugh at because all the kids use my room for different reasons at different times. But you can only do what you can only do on that day. And there's sometimes we've got to sit back and say, I say, my children are clean, the bed sheets are clean, they've eaten, we've all had a laugh together and a cuddle, it's good enough. There's times to say, it's good enough. So point two, goodbye to the day, have a ritual for going to sleep. Point three, we talked about this before, meditation, meditation. This is a point in itself. Meditate each day. Now there are different levels of meditation. So there's the meditation of simply thinking about an issue with a level of detachment. So observing the, the issue from above and thinking, I'm going to choose not to be attached to this issue. Then there's deeper meditation where you need to not be driving or not concentrating on other things. And you dedicate a time and a space. Notice I say a space, a dedicated space to meditate. There's chanting meditation, which I love to chant a mantra to help me heal at times. There's visualization meditation and there's the exquisitely beautiful meditation of silence. Only you know, my friend, only you know what meditation suits you on the day. Point four, journal. Now I probably should have put, made this point one, but because I'm running by the seat of my pants here, I'm going to make it point four, journaling. Journaling is really, 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 really important. By writing down the actions of the day, by writing down our thoughts, our feelings, by writing down what we're grateful for. And I talk about this in my book. So keeping notes of how you're progressing each day, what you could do differently, what you'd pat yourself on the back for. Writing that down each day means you're putting it somewhere and then you close the book. Now writing a journal is a process in itself that I've spoken about in other podcasts and I will again. Today is just about going through these points so that you can look at this and think, oh yes, this is something else I can try. So keeping a journal each day. Now with a journal, it's not about sitting down for two hours. It's about deciding. I usually journal for 10 minutes twice a day, sometimes two. Sometimes, as Reuben Gretchen says, she's written a beautiful book on happiness. It's about writing a sentence. You do what you can do on that day. Each day is a day in your life. So enjoy the process. Don't bite off more than you can chew. Or if you do bite off more than you can chew, pat yourself on the back, forgive yourself and move on. Point five, have a personal mantra. My mantra, as most of you know, is I'm okay. And when I say I'm okay, there's always a sense of release. 
I like the mantra, I'm okay, because it's not a big full-on mantra like, I'm going to take over the world, I'm going to succeed, I'm going to win, I say with a grunt. It's a, okay, life is, life is what it is. Oh, I'm okay, I can do this. So have a mantra for yourself, a personal mantra to you. Point six, comfort. When I was young, I had a, a blanket I liked and I had a favorite doll, doll. I called my favorite doll Martha. She was a bit stiff, but as in she didn't move her arms and legs very well, but I loved her very, very much. And I would go to sleep with her by my bed. So consciously, Consciously choose to have symbols of comfort in your life and consciously choose to know what they are. So mine are my porcelain cup that my beautiful cousin gave me. My slippers, I have beautiful pure wool slippers. I have an amazing dressing gown that my ex-husband gave me that's very, very precious to me. And as soon as I put it on, it's like a magic coat an invisible coat it gives me superpowers and helps me feel good my plants when I walk into my little jungle in my bathroom my plants give me a sense of comfort consciously choose symbols of comfort point seven oils point seven oils consciously choose essential oils now they need to be good quality they're not cheap they need to be good quality my friends so consciously choose essential oils that support your journey i have favorite oils i love lavender lavender is beautiful for falling asleep i put a drop of lavender on my eye bag yes my eye bag is one of my symbols for sleep i put it on the children's pillows and on my doona and sometimes I sprinkle a little bit on my sacred space where I meditate. So oils are so important. I also use incense, but sometimes uh, I know some of my clients struggle to inhale incense. So consider whether incense helps you sleep, but definitely have oils. Number eight. Have a worry box. A worry box. Now the worry box with one of my children is invisible. Just before I go to sleep, I name my worries and I put them in a box, real or invisible, and I shut the box. You may want to write your worries down. Uh, you may want to just name them out aloud and then in a real way or an imaginary way put them away put them away number nine always take a couple of moments to observe your physical self before you go to bed your physical self talks to you about how you feel and tells you so much are you holding stress? If so, where? And just notice why. I always notice now when I speak to people or involve myself or interact with people, what my body says to me. Sometimes I think someone is absolutely wonderful and then I'm holding some stress in my body. And I question why am I holding stress? And perhaps I've noticed that this person gossips or this person is not always positive. And my Ego self is not noticing, but my physical self, my deeper self, does notice. So throughout the day, take a couple of moments to observe. And number 10, drum roll, trumpets, lightning. I'm doing a little dance here, a little dance. Are you listening, my friend? Accept yourself. Accept the moment. Accept God has given you today. Now, I'm with you, my friend. I'm a highly charged, passionate, 
full-on enthusiastic individual and my path through creating videos and podcasts has to been has been to slow down and I have slowed down very slowly over the years I'm still too reactive too passionate and I would say too attached I'm on a journey but the journey is every day I work towards self-acceptance and sometimes sometimes I don't sleep when I do don't sleep I lie there and I say I accept that I'm not going to fall asleep or I may not sleep today and I'm just going to relax I'm going to progressively relax all my limbs one by one and accept the moment as it is accept the moment as it is so number 10 is acceptance so go through these one more time number one be still every day number two consciously say goodbye to the day number three meditate number four journal number five create a mantra number six have conscious symbols of comfort number seven have a favorite oil number eight have a worry box number nine consciously observe your physical self and number ten accept the person you are accept the moment that God has given you accept your mistakes it doesn't mean apathy it doesn't mean give up you can accept your mistakes accept your behaviors and then choose to adjust them so you accept them and then you say I'm going to change that behavior so they are my top tips they're my top tips for sleep they work for me a lot of the time not always I don't always work but a lot of the time but with each day I'm learning to accept the day accept the person I am today accept what God has given me and find happiness anyway and isn't that what it's all about finding happiness in the day today what are your ideas for happiness I really love to hear them my Facebook life coaching link and my podcast link is below please write in to me my email address is below I love to hear from you and I'd love to hear what podcast shows you would like to hear and I would love to provide I'd love to provide the content you're searching for so I finished my cup of tea I've really enjoyed speaking with you so my friend be still meditate journal chant your mantra put on your fluffy your fluffy slippers use your oils put your worries away and accept yourself